look, guys, this video right here, guys, will be about five or six ways, somewhere between five and seven ways. I've learned I gotta hurt you to do before it get dark with you guys. I got held on some topics today, guys, but I gotta get this video done. Five or six ways I think on our way to fail, guys. One way is, I know definitely how on our way to fail is uh, unstability at work, guys. They don't have a steady workflow to sustain their business. Either they least start to a company and the work is drying up, they don't know how to, know how to jump around to another, to another company, or they don't know how to find work on their own to sustain themselves. So, a lot of times, a lot of guys go out of business, they, they, they turn in their trucks or get rid of them because the work is unstable. Now, this ain't for everybody, but this is for a lot of workers I've seen that went out, went out of business, guys. Unstability of work. They went out of fine work, they're not negotiating for their loans, or the, or the work is just so up and down where they can't sustain themselves. So that is going to put you out of business because the, the whole purpose of business is uh, cash flow and capital. You don't have that, you're going to be out of business soon without customers to give you that. So a lot of guys, they build out after that, guys. Number two is uh, you live beyond your means or you're balling out of control too soon. A lot of guys, when they start seeing those settlements, when, they, when the money is good, what they do is, they go start, the more money they make, the more cheese they get, baby. Ask me how I know, and I'll tell you the same, baby. I'll tell you the same. But anyway, the more things they start buying, so therefore the money they're making, instead of seeing a profit, instead of seeing a profit, what they do is, the more money they make, the more things they buy, so they always live in check to check. And when a one big breakdown come, or two breakdowns come in a row, maybe four or five, you have the game, baby, because you can't afford to, you can't afford to maintain your truck because all your money is tied up in, uh, in bills, expenses, and other things. So you don't have the profit, you don't have the capital, cash reserves to maintain that truck. So you, you, buy, you spend it too much, too soon, and you don't know how to manage your cash flow, which I'll get to that in a minute. So, that's another reason the guys I see on Arbor is bought a business, guys, because they are, uh, they spend too much, too soon. Be honest with yourself, they spend too much, period. Like, it ain't just too soon, they just spend too much, period. And they are, uh, they, they don't create no safety net for themselves. They just, they, 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 they chasing a, they chasing a, a load, they chasing a, the next load, they chasing a dollar all the time. And they're not positioning themselves to be like, you know, able to, to stay in these when hard times come. But they're going to come. Another reason I see on our bread squad of business, guys, poor cash management. This alone the lives of spending too much money too soon, but when the money come in, they don't separate the personal from the business bills, and uh, they'll get all mixed up in the same shuffle. And man, they think they see the whole settlement, they think it's all theirs. Man, you ain't factoring in taxes, you ain't factoring in Breakdowns ain't factoring in when times get slow because along the lines of the, the stability of work, you gotta understand that everything has a slow time, it has a slow period. Nothing stays busy 100% of the time. It just don't happen that way, guys. Um, I wish it did, but it don't. So they don't manage their money right when uh, when the bills, when the stuff, when times get hard, it get tight. They don't have enough money stacked to the side, cash reserves to maintain for that, that drought. So poor cash cash management problems, guys. They don't have it. That'll put you out of business really quick, man. And what's crazy about that one is you're making a boatload of money for a long period of time, so you don't see that sticking up on you. So all of a sudden, when, the, when a couple major breakdowns come, or this market gets so slow, then you get a breakdown, then, oh, I ain't got no money. Now you ain't trying to find credit cards, trying to find all money. Try to get a loan for your, for your bank or a van somewhere. You gotta be more, you gotta be uh, you gotta be more cash management savvy. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't know, figure it out. The reason I say this, guys, because I, I was like a lot, I was in a lot of these categories for a lot of years for a long time. I was in a lot of these categories, guys, myself. So I'm speaking from first-hand experience. The Lord just mercy with me. That's all. That's when I realized what was going on. You know. It ain't too late, I'm still doing it right now. Number three is taxes, guys. Another thing, like, the, the other thing that knocks a lot of guys out of the game is taxes. They 
all count for taxes. They see their salaries when things are good. Like I said, when things are good, they see their money. They think it's all theirs. Until it's time to pay the taxes at the end of the year, baby. Then the tax man say, hey, man, you owe us $20,000. you like, $20,000? I ain't got no $20,000. Now, according to our records here, you made something, 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 such. You telling me you ain't putting no money up? The answer to that is, nope, I ain't put jack up. So, now, he don't get you right away, guys. The IRS don't get you right away. So you all you all on taxes. So now the next year you work, you gotta work enough to pay the old the previous year worth of taxes back. Plus, you gotta work enough to pay the tax you owe on the current present year. So that happens over and over again. Guys can never they can never really catch up. So when they can't catch up, it just it just it just swallows them alive, man. They can't they can't catch up, guys. And the crazy part is they lose their trucking business, but they steal all the taxes. You still owe taxes, you can't get rid of that. Right? Not that I know of. So Hold on, guys. Hold on. No sense of direction, guys. They don't know where they're going with the business. They just get a truck and they hope it work out. They don't have no plan of action. They don't have no exit strategy. They don't know how to build. They don't know how to scale a company. They, they only know how to manage the company they got, the one truck they got, or two trucks or three trucks. They winging it every day. Every day, they, every day they throwing haymakers, guys. Every single day, hoping it work out. You only can do that for so long, man. Eventually, stuff will catch up to you. You know what I'm talking about? You gotta have a plan, man. You gotta know where you're going with this game. Even if you wanna take this and like do other things with the money you know what I'm saying that's more investment type to kind of get you create you some ladders you know what I'm saying a lot of guys don't have that so they they they, they sink or swim every single day and what happens is they reach burnout when you reach burnout you just say forget it I'm out of here you don't think about nothing else all you want is relief as you don't want you don't care about who take what I know a guy uh, recently he sold his truck he had a good he had a he had a pretty decent setup but he reached so much burnout man He's like, man, I just want to, to get out the game, man. So he sold the truck for dirt cheap, and he left the game. But he don't, he don't know. I ain't going to say he don't know. He, just, he, did, he did what he thought was best, you know what I'm saying? And maybe sometimes that is best, but if you don't have a sense of direction or exit strategy, you will reach burnout, guys. You can have a limit truck or a limit trucks, guys, where it's costing you so much money where you don't, you don't man, you can't maintain it if you wanted to, man, because every time you turn around, your truck got to go to the shop, and it's just limit after limit because... The truck you bought, you thought it was decent, but man, you mess around and get a truck that, man, you thought was decent to get you at least a couple months. That thing, first first day out, man, that thing going to the shop. First week out is going to the shop. Second week out is going to the shop. You get a limit truck, guys, where the truck just ain't, it ain't holding up, man. You can't quite get ahead because the truck is just so jacked up, it ain't turn around, it's going to the shop. Now, that can put you out of business too really quick, man, because you know you're dumping your money into the truck. You got to make money to dump money back into your truck. You just dumping money into your truck and you're making no money, eventually you're gonna run out of money. But a lot of us ain't wealthy, so that ain't our case. So a lot of guys don't know how, they don't know how to maintain uh, a limit truck. They can't maintain a limit truck, guys. You can't maintain that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a money pit, we call it. You have a money pit truck. That means that truck always needs something done to it because whoever had it before you, or even probably a couple of previous owners probably jacked it up and turned it in, and you get the truck, and you, you ain't heard them no problems. You know what I'm talking about? But number six reason is, guys, Guys don't know how to maintain their trucks without going broke. I, like I said, I did a whole video on that, how to maintain your truck without going broke. Guys think that you just get stuff fixed, fix everything. You don't know your stash is dwindling down little more, little by little. Before you know it, your, your, your cash reserves is sitting on E because you wasn't paying attention because you're trying to get everything fixed at once. And sometimes you can't do that, guys. You got to fix a little bit, run a little bit, make some more money. Fix a little bit, run a little bit, make some more money. Fix a little bit, run a little bit, make, make, make some more money. It's a system to this, guys. Unless you got all the money to get it fixed. Because here's the thing. When you when you run in your truck and you fix this stuff little by little, and if, especially if you don't have real good bookkeeping, you can lose the books. And what I mean is you thinking you winning, you think you're turning a profit, and you look at you look at the real numbers, the real not the numbers you got in your head, like I assume I'm making money. The real numbers, you thinking you really making a profit, you look at your stuff and you're like, man, I'm losing. I'm losing, and so by the time you realize you're losing, you probably already lost. So you gotta learn how to, man. You gotta know how to balance it out when you when you win this game. Cause this is a, this is a long game. Just cause your bank account look good right now, you want to get everything fixed on that truck, but you gotta leave a certain level of resistance in your bank account for maintenance, a maintenance cushion. Don't spend it all. I know some guys they go ham with it, boy. They got like twelve thousand in their bank account on, on thing, and they need twelve thousand worth of work. Give me the whole twelve thousand, baby. Let's go. I'll make it back. I'm not that risky, guys. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm not that risky, man. You might get six about me, baby. 
Hey, I'll come back for the other six, man. You know what I'm talking about? But I get the main stuff, keep the main thing, the main thing, and the minor stuff, hey, man. I'm not majoring in minor things, I just say that. But my truck will be maintained, but, you know, over time. Like I said, I did a whole video on that, guys. But these over my years of being out here, this, I've seen this, guys, and I'm telling you, I believe these are some of the reasons. There's plenty more, but these are five to seven. I think it's six I named on here. Reasons why I think most owner operators fail in this business, guys. Why they just, they either throw in a towel or they just, they sink, they sink under the water, guys. And like I said, I hope this video really helped you guys out, man, because this is real life experiences. A lot of these things on this list, I face my, myself, except the taxes part. I don't mess around with the IRS, guys. I don't do it, man. So anything else, you know, you know, hey, man, hey, the IRS, nah, I ain't mess around with them. So, but a lot, a lot of these other categories, your boy been in myself, so I'm telling you from experience, I didn't read this in some book. I didn't see, I didn't only see this happen with other people. I seen it in myself too. I just, the Lord's just merciful with me to allow, allow me to make it this long before I figure things out. You know what I'm saying? I'm still figuring it out, but at the end of the day, this is what I figured out so far. So if this is you, get some of these things in order, guys. I don't care if you got one truck, if you're a DBA, I don't care if you're a sole proprietor with one truck or if you're an uh, entity yourself. Treat that truck like a business and run the numbers like a real business. I don't care if it's one truck, guys. A lot of guys think because they got one truck, it's not a business. It's a hustle. It could be a hustle, it could be whatever you want it to be. But at the end of the day, treat it like a business, even if it's a hustle, and that way you'll maintain it to get you to your next move, if that's what you want. Anyway, I right, YouTube, hope this video is helpful, give you a little understanding of what's going on, chill. And I'll see you guys next video. Peace.